I wanted to talk about something I hate a lot, which is pets. The idea of having a pet. And um, before I talked about before I talk about that, I wanted to um, explain again. You know, why do I care about how people treat animals? Why do I care what people do? Why do I care about these trespasses against other creatures, which may or may not be of equal value to humans, according to some humans? Um, and the reason is because when you hurt or enslave any other living creature, you are hurting and enslaving me, and you are hurting and enslaving yourself. Because there is no separation between you and other life. Because it all has the same quality and value, in my opinion, which is life. Like, life itself is the common thread between humans and plants and animals and fungi and who knows what else is out there or in here that we aren't even aware has life in it. Probably everything. Um, but the point is, it affects me when other people have pets because their disrespect of the life in that life form, the form that contains that life, their disrespect of that life is the same as their disrespect of the life that's in me and the life that's in them. And that is why I care about shit like plants and pets and fruit trees. So I wanted to get that out of the way. Um, and I also wanted to tackle one thing real quick, which is why I make videos about seemingly mundane, uh, issues that I consider issues, some people don't consider them issues, issues like pets and what you eat. Like, why does this stuff matter? You know, why am I not making videos about the current political system that we live in, or the politicians, or conspiracies, or this, that, and the other? And the reason is because the issues that I talk about are foundational issues that deal with Humans disrespect, fundamental disrespect of life on this planet, in this universe. And so I only want to tackle the foundation um, because once I have argued um, why my foundation makes sense, everything that's built upon it, which includes all political ideologies except for primitivism, um, all political systems, really anything else that you could think about will fall because it cannot be supported once um, you switch your foundation to one of respecting all life forms um, and life energy uh, equally and consider it just as valuable as yourself. Um, so that's why I talk about stuff that might seem unimportant like fruitarianism. So I wanted to talk about pets because it's something that I have a lot of personal um, experience with and pain surrounding because I have had dogs. Um, my family has had dogs that have gotten sick and died. Um, I have had guinea pigs, um, cats, cats, one cat, two cats, um, tarantulas, as I said before, um, rats, uh, other types of animals. Um, and I used to think it was just fine. I used to think, yeah, pets, you know, it's really sad that there's so many pets in the animal shelters that don't have homes, but, you know, that's too bad. You know, I'm going to do what I can do to help. I'm going to volunteer at the animal shelter because I was always an animal lover, and, um, I'm going to take care of my animals and other people's animals, um, because that's what we're supposed to do, right? And... When my dog, my most recently alive dog, was nearing the end of her life, it became abundantly clear to me that having pets is just wrong. It's an aberration. 
and I realized that because I saw her so decrepit and weak and purposeless and joyless and confused because she was very old um, and she'd been eating you know canned dog food and grain-based kibble probably GMO for her entire life and so um, yeah she lived a long time but I personally don't measure uh, a person's life by the quantity of years I measure it by the quality of that life and I personally don't think she had a great quality of life and um, when I saw her in my house, confused, um, it was very sad because she obviously was so dependent upon humans and, you know, canned food and, um, you know, she was a slave to uh, civilization just like humans are. And, um, the more that I analyze why people have pets to begin with, um, obviously some animals have been raised to work. And, like, I saw a border collie when I was going to the post office today. And that border collie was a happy dog. That border collie wanted to sniff everything and chase everything, and it was super energetic. And it's hard to look at that and say, pets, having pets is wrong. Like, that is all, that dog is not happy. Like, that is, that is a crime. Because that dog looks happy. Now, I don't know if any of you have read Brave New World, but the alphas, betas, deltas, epsilons were happy too with their enslavement. And Humans have become happy with our enslavement as long as we get a constant stream of excitotoxic food and media um, and we get to pursue our um, chemical addictions through everything, through behavior and consumption. And so I, again, don't look to those um, sources of happiness as being sustainable or actually promoting happiness, I always define happiness by freedom. And what we have done to domesticated animals is taken away their freedom. And not only that, we have bred them in such a way that they don't even know that they don't have freedom anymore. And the same thing has happened to humans. We have been socially engineered to a level where we don't even realize that we have no power. We have no ability to control our own lives. And um, it's beautiful because the easiest way to enslave a life form is to convince it that it's free and then have it um, actively enslaving itself because then the authorities that want whatever those enslaved life forms have to offer the authorities don't have to do anything because the enslaved population is keeping themselves enslaved and that I think is what we have done to domesticated animals too um, because they don't even know what's going on. <laughs> they are so dependent and they've had their natural instincts bred out of them. Um, if you tried to take a wild wolf and turn it into a house dog, that thing would fight you to the death because it would recognize that you were trying to take its freedom away and it doesn't want that because it has other things to do it has other interests and we decided that animals are for our pleasure and I have wondered why did we do this because I was thinking 
How often do you think we would see baby animals in the wild? If we were living as hunter-gatherers, how often do we see, do, would we see baby animals? And I was thinking that probably we wouldn't see them because we would either have our faces ripped off by their mothers first, or um, they would be very well hidden by their protector caregivers. Um, but we have a culture now that is obsessed with baby animals. And the most helpless baby animals that you can think of are the ones that we want the most. We have bred noble wild dogs, wild wolves, into teacup chihuahuas that are, I mean, I don't want to say useless because that's like disrespectful to the animal, but useless and um, completely helpless and pathetic. And why have we done that? My theory is that baby animals make us feel like genetic winners. And how does that work? Well, when we have babies, we, and we spend time with those babies, our babies especially, but really all babies, um, we get hormones released in our body, like oxytocin, that make us feel really good, and they make us feel bonded to those babies. And that's a, pro it's a protective mechanism, because those babies need help, and if they had a bunch of uh, apathetic parents that didn't feel anything for the babies, those babies would not survive. So the bonding feeling that we get with helpless babies is a um, survival mechanism. So I think that we have transferred that feeling to baby animals for people who need to feel like genetic winners because they have not gotten enough hits of oxytocin from their own um, breeding, their own spread of DNA. Um, so when we look at baby animals, we feel that warm and fuzzy feeling inside. And that warm and fuzzy feeling is a way that our body says, Good job! You made a baby! You spread your DNA! Good job! That's a, it's a reward. That feeling is a reward. Now, we can get it from looking at cat macros on the internet, um, which, you know, you can do for hours and just feel great about it. But <clears throat> people take it to a different level. They actually have pets. What are pets? Pets are stand-in babies that are babies forever, because they are helpless forever, because we have made them helpless. And we get to use those life forms, those helpless life forms, to make us feel good about ourselves and our um, genetic success, basically. So this is like hard to explain, um, but, and this is scientifically proven because it's a well-known fact that people who have pets live longer and also that oxytocin is released um, when you spend time with a pet. And actually it's released for the pet too in the pet's body, um, if it's like a dog I think or a cat, um, which is very interesting. But highly inappropriate um, in my opinion. Okay. So um, it's highly inappropriate that we are using pets to feel like winners in evolution, which is what we're doing. Um, because how, like, if we were in the wild, there wouldn't be pets. Because you can't have pets until you domesticate animals. And you can't be living in symbiosis with nature and also domesticating animals. Animals would not want to be domesticated by you. You have to break them first, just like you had to break humans to domesticate them. But once you do it, you're, you're great. You can just totally objectify the animals, treat them as if their only living purpose is to make you feel good about yourself, and that's what we do. And not only that, but we treat them just like we treat 
um, life forms in agriculture, like plants, we treat them like they are only there to serve us. So we make them work for us, we make them cuddle with us, we make them make cute faces and we put them in clothes and we anthropomorphize them and we breed them and show them and we use them to glorify ourselves like look at my beautiful dog like it's so beautiful and when it stands by me like I look so good with this dog and I have a lot of that that I see in this area in the Bay Area because there's a lot of really wealthy people with a lot of really expensive purebred dogs funny funnily enough um, a lot of them have really serious health issues, and that's another reason why having and creating pets is so evil, because we have made them genetically weak. Um, we have reduced their diversity, we have reduced their hardiness, and so now uh, modern animals are not only suffering from genetic issues because of how we've bred them to be a certain way, but they are also suffering from nutritional deficiencies and they're suffering from um, inherited nutritional deficiencies. So over many generations of um, poor diet, poor lifestyle, and um, breeding poorly. So we are making these creatures suffer health conditions because we want them to look and act a certain way. And that to me is disgusting. And we do this, and we also then, again, sexually abuse these animals, just like we sexually abuse the plants um, when we take away their seeds. We uh, spay and neuter animals so that they won't breed, which, like, who, where, why do we have the right to do that? Oh, well, we say we have the right to do that because we have an overpopulation problem with the pets. Why do we have an overpopulation problem with the pets? Because we created an overpopulation problem with the pets when we created pets. Like, in the natural environment, they would take care of their populations. You know, it's, it's a negative feedback loop. But we have created a positive feedback loop where we create more pets that create more pets, and then more people want pets, and then more people make more pets. And so now, you're considered a good person if you sexually abuse your animal by spaying or neutering it because you are uh, protecting the animal population from overpopulation and we have shelters that are just full of unwanted homeless animals because we again have created this pet culture where Everyone wants to feel that warm, fuzzy feeling inside, so everyone's got to have a warm, fuzzy little animal by their side, or ten. Some people have a lot of animals. Um, I'm trying to think if there's other issues about pets that I really hate. I mean, aside the fact that we use them as a vehicle to deliver uh, genetically modified, um, totally evolutionarily inappropriate foods into these animals, like, they're just another place to uh, deposit food from our um, industrial food system, and so they just support our production of grains and corn and soy um, and, uh, and feedlot beef and feedlot um, other feedlot meats. So they just, they support that too, and um, we, let's see what else is there that I hate about animals. People think that they're closer to nature when they have animals in their life. Um, and they feel really good about themselves because they feel like they're communing with animals. But I don't really see it that way because I think it's more like two totally retarded, brainwashed, mentally ill creatures hanging out together because we have the domesticated animal and then the domesticated human and they sure they have a lot in common because they're both domesticated but like thinking that they're having some sort of spiritual connection I don't so much buy that um let's see well I mean you could get into the whole uh exotic animals industry and trade which is again disgusting let's take 
incredible wild animals out of nature and put them in homes and put them in jars and put them in boxes and put them in tanks. Um, let's take animals out of the ocean, fish out of the ocean or, um, you know, other, or other life forms out of the ocean away from that and then attempt to recreate the ocean in a tank. Um, I'm sure that that fish or whatever it is, is going to have a wonderful life in a box. And so, again, this is why domestication is wrong, because we domesticate and then we become domesticated, and we never see the problem in domestication. So we don't see it when we look at our dogs, we're, we don't see that domestication is wrong, and then we don't look at ourselves and see our own domestication and see that that's wrong. And so this is why it matters when you have a pet, because your disrespect for that pet is your disrespect for me and, your, and disrespect for yourself, because this is life, 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 the big concept of life that you are disrespecting by your actions. And it's only hurting you. You are the one that is going to suffer the most, whether you realize it or not, because you're not letting yourself or anything around you have the full experience of life and consciousness. Um, what else do I have to say about this? This isn't even, this is, go, this is only people who actually try to treat their pets well. Like, you can go into pet abuse, animal abuse, um the way people cage their dogs all day long, um, the way that people, I don't even, like farm animals, everything, all of it, all of it. Like, you have to give freedom to get it. You have to give that freedom to the animals, you have to give that freedom to the plants, or else you're never going to have it yourself. And so, um... Yeah, that's what I have to say about this right now, but it pisses me off.